Okay, in this video, we're going to be looking at gene linkage as a special situation with dihybrid crosses. Everything you've done up until this point with dihybrid crosses, that's assuming there is no gene linkage. In other words, those two genes, whatever letters you're looking at, R and Y, whatever genes you're looking at, R and Y, are actually on separate chromosomes. So, quick review of what a dihybrid cross, oops, went too far, actually is. This situation here, this 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio, should be very famous by now. And you should understand that you always get 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 if two of the parents, if both of the parents are heterozygous for both traits. So if this is the one of the parents, then you can see there are four possible gametes, and they are listed right here in this diagram. So if both the parents are like that, then you end up with a maximum Punnett square size of 4 by 4, and then you end up with this ratio of phenotype outcomes, 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. Nine of them have both of the dominant traits. Only one out of the 16 has both of the recessive traits. And then you have three and three of the combinations, the new combinations that can be made. So quickly over here, a dihybrid cross is when you investigate two genes being inherited together. And because the two genes are not on the same chromosome, the chance of inheriting one of them does not affect the chance of inheriting the other. So this is what we've been studying so far, and it's called independent assortment. It's Mendel's second law, and it's called Mendel's second law of independent assortment, the idea that these two genes do not affect each other. So all possible outcomes are equally likely. So all of these predicted Punnett square ratios we get have to assume that we are following Mendel's law. So if I do some kind of cross and my numbers match the ratios, then I can assume that Mendel was right. And the two genes that I'm investigating, in this case, uh, color and shape, are actually assorting independently. Therefore, they are on different chromosomes. So take a look at some sample data here. If we use this as our predicted ratio, and based on some calculations, this is what we expect and then our numbers, look at this, 315, they're pretty close to the predicted numbers. So I can, I can assume that whatever uh, was being investigated here, well, it is the seed color and the seed shape, does follow Mendel's law of independent assortment. Therefore, I can conclude, I can conclude that these two genes controlling seed color and seed shape must be on different chromosomes. 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. Now, we've said this, I'm, I, I, I keep repeating this. Normally, we assume that the genes are unlinked. Unlinked means they are on different chromosomes, inherited independently, therefore they follow Mendel's second law, therefore they should follow the predicted, predicted ratio as the Punnett square shows us. But what if we have a situation where everything's going as expected, I have two parents, they're both heterozygous for both traits, and... I cross them, you know, look at, examine a thousand of their actual seeds that they produce, and I look at the numbers and they totally don't match up with the 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. And I go back and I check, I double check, wait, everything's right, there are two parents, both of them are heterozygous for both traits, so they should be big R, little r, big Y, little y, cross with big R, little r, big Y, little y, and the numbers that I get in the end do not match 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. This means something funky is going on. So let's look at how uh, what might actually be happening. So in normal independent assortment, you can end up with a situation like this, where the chromosomes would line up like this during metaphase one, or they could line up like this. This is an example of random assortment, the way they line up. If they line up like they are showing on the left, then my possible gametes are big A, big B, or little a, little b. Just split down this line, right? This is the equator of the cell. So if they separate like this, that's a possible gamete, that's a possible gamete. But 50% of the time, they should line up like this as well, too. This is just as likely. So if this happens, then I can get these gametes, too. Big A, little b, and little a, big b. That's why when you get something like big A, little a, big b, little b as a genotype for a parent, you can assume that these are the four possible gametes that can be produced. This is normal. This is following Mendel's second law. This is what a Punnett square should predict. So equal numbers of these gametes. They're all just as likely as each other. Now, what does gene linkage look like? If A and B are actually on the same chromosome, notice what happens here. If it lines up like this during metaphase, well, 
that's fine. Or it could line up a different way. If it lines up like this, doesn't seem to make a difference, right? Because the letters big A and big B are actually on the same chromosome. So even if they line up a sort in a different way, they're still connected like this. So either way you do this, uh, most of the, well, all of the, if you only examine this situation, then all of the gametes will be big A or big B because big A, big A and big B or little a, little B because they're connected together no matter how you line them up during metaphase. So these other possibilities, big A, little b, and little a, big b, don't seem very likely or almost impossible in this situation. The only way that could be possible is if crossing over actually happens. And these new combinations, we call them recombinants, and they only show up when crossing over happens. So we're going to see that on the next slide. So quick reminder, gene linkage, when you're defining gene linkage, it's when two or more genes are located on the same chromosome. It's very simple. Okay, gene linkage just means they're linked on the same chromosome. So if this is the situation here, how do I create new combinations or recombinants? Uh, that's during prophase one when crossing over actually happens. Now if crossing over happens to happen in the right situation, now you can create some new combinations. By switching some of these alleles, now look at this, I have big A and little b actually on the same part. So if we divide down the middle here and then divide again, we can end up with new combinations. However, you have to assume, and this is usually the case, that the chance of crossing over won't be as likely as not crossing over. So what will happen is you can still produce all four possible gametes, but the parental types these ones that were originally on the chromosomes will probably show up in higher proportions than the recombinants as a result of crossing over. These two gamete types from the example that we just showed will only show up with, if crossing over actually happens. So it says right here, it won't be in the ratios predicted by Mendel because the recombinants will still be less common because the chance of crossing over is less. So as a result of this little mishap here that, uh, these genes are actually linked and on the same chromosome, the only way to form these new recombinants is if crossing over happens. And just by probability, that doesn't happen as often as it not crossing over. Therefore, now, there's no way you can put this into a, you can't, you can't generate a Punnett square to do these kinds of predictions because crossing over is a very random process. And it's not guaranteed it's going to happen as often as not crossing over. So that's basically it. You can draw these conclusions. So let me head back over here to show you this uh, paragraph. Oh, where is it? So far back. There's other ways. So if the, let me read this one more time. Normally we assume that the genes are unlinked. If they are not linked, that means they are on different chromosomes. If they are on different chromosomes, then they are inherited independently. They should follow Mendel's second law, and then we should get the ratio as predicted. Now we can switch this whole thing around. If the genes are linked, so I'm going to do the opposite now. If the genes are linked, then that means they are on the same chromosome. They are not inherited independently. Therefore, they do not follow Mendel's second law, and we will not find a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. So if you get a question and they present you with some data and you look at the data and it does not match the Punnett square that you generated, they might say, give an explanation for this. Then you would go ahead and say, uh, because it doesn't follow the ratio, we assume that the genes must be linked and on the same chromosome. They're not inherited independently. They don't follow the predicted ratio. The only way for those recombinants to be formed is through crossing over, but there's no way to predict how likely that is to happen. So I posted another video with a practice question. A specific practice question when you're dealing with linked genes and there's a special way to actually show that by drawing little lines that represent chromosomes you need to go through that and understand how to do that and i think i've tried to explain it in detail you approach it the same way that you would with a regular type of question by writing down the genotypes the phenotypes the possible gametes you show the links and then identify the recombinants that are possible as a result of crossing over. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Uh, good luck with your study of genetics.